Timuriaya. The Timurids were a Sunni Islamic dynasty in Central Asia that covered all of Central Asia, Iran, Afghanistan and Pakistan, as well as parts of India, Mesopotamia and the Caucasus. The empire was founded by the legendary conqueror Timur Lenk in the 14th century. The origins of the Timurid dynasty go back to a confederation of Mongolian nomads known as the Balas, which were the remnants of Genghis Khan's Mongol army. After conquering Central Asia, the Balas settled in Turkitan, later known as Mogolistan, the land of the Mongols, and mixed with the Turks and local speaking people there, so during Timurid rule the Balas were Turkized in terms of language and customs. In addition, by adopting Islam, Central Asian Turks adopted the Persian literary and high culture that dominated Central Asia since the beginning of Islamic influence. Persian literature was influential in the assimilation of the Timurid elite to the Persian Islamic culture of politeness. Timur Lenk was a Muslim who admired the Naxabandia order that flourished in the Transoxiana region. However, his Islamic advisor was Abdul Jabbar Khwarazmi, a Sunni of the Hanafi school. In the city of Tiamids, Timur was educated by Saeed Baraka who was also a scholar and Alil Bait. Tamerlane or Timur Lenk which means Timur the Lane was a Mongol descendant who had converted to Islam, he defeated Tuflik Temur and Ilyas Koja, and later he also fought Amir Hussein, his own brother-in-law. And he proclaimed himself the sole ruler of Transoxiana, the successor to the Chagatai of Genghis Khan. The conqueror was born near Kesh now Kakrisyabs, Green City, Uzbekistan, south of Samarkand in Transoxiana, on April 8, 1336 AD, 25 Shaban 736 Hydra, and died in Otra in 1404 AD. His father was Taragai, chief of the Balas tribe, descendants of the Noyan Karakas who were ministers and relatives of Jagatai, son of Genghis Khan. The Balas followed Jagatai westward and settled in Samarkand. Taragai became governor of Kesh. His family claimed descent from Genghis Khan himself. From a very young age, his extraordinary courage and might were already evident. He was often given the task of taming unruly horses and hunting wild animals. By the time he was 12 years old, he had already engaged in many battles and displayed prowess and valor that raised his name among his people. However, it was not until after his father's death that the history of his might began and after Jagatai died, each emir broke away from the central government. Timur Lenk served the governor of Transoxiana, Amir Khazaran when Khazaran died, there was an invasion from Tufluk Temur Khan, the leader of Mohulistan, who plundered and occupied Transoxiana. Timur Lenk rose to lead the resistance in defense of his oppressed people. Tufluk Temur Khan, having seen Timur's courage and prowess, offered him the governorship of his homeland. The offer was accepted. However, a year after Timur Lenk was appointed governor, in 1361 AD, Tufluk Temur appointed his son Ilyas Koja as governor of Samarkand and Timur Lenk as his vizier. This left Timur Lenk dissatisfied. He soon joined Khazaran's grandson, Amir Hussein, and took up arms in revolt against Tufluk Temur Khan. Timur Lenk defeated Tufluk Temur Khan and Ilyas Koja. Both were killed in battle. Timur Lenk's ambition to become a great king soon arose. It was because of this ambition that he then turned to declare war against Amir Hussein, although his own brother-in-law. In the battle between the two, he managed to defeat and kill Amir Hussein in Bork. Then on April 10, 1370 AD, he proclaimed himself the sole ruler of Transoxiana, the successor of Jagatai and the descendant of Genghis Khan. In the first ten years of his reign, he conquered Jatta and Kawarism with nine expeditions. In 1393 AD he destroyed the Mujafari dynasty in Fars and massacred its surviving emirs. That same year he plundered Baghdad, and a year later he occupied Mesopotamia. The then ruler of Baghdad, Sultan Ahmad Jalair, fled to Syria. He later became the vassal of the Sultan of Egypt, al-Malik al-Zahir Barkik. 
This Egyptian-based ruler of the Mameluk dynasty was the only king he was unwilling and unsuccessful in subduing. Timur Lenk's envoys sent to Egypt for a peace treaty were partly killed and partly humiliated, then sent back to Timur Lenk. Egypt, as in the days of Hulagu Khan's raids, was again safe from Mongol attack. As Sultan Barkak refused to extradite Ahmad Jalair who was under his protection, Timur Lenk then launched an invasion of Asia Minor plundering the cities of Tikrit, Mardin and Amid. In Tikrit, the hometown of Saladin al Ayyubi, he built a pyramid from the skulls of his victims. In 1395 AD he invaded the Kipchak area, then conquered Moscow which he occupied for over a year. Three years later he invaded India. It is said that the reason for his invasion was that he considered the Muslim rulers in this area to be too tolerant of Hindus. He himself thought that the Muslim rulers should have imposed Islam on the population. In India he massacred more than 80,000 prisoners. In order to build a mosque in Samarkand, he needed large stones. For this, 90 elephants were hired to carry the huge stones from Delhi to Samarkand. After the foundations of the mosque were laid, in 1399 Timur Lenk set out to fight the Mamluk Sultan of Egypt who was helping Ahmad Jalair, the Mongol ruler of Baghdad who had fled when he occupied the city earlier, and to fight the Ottoman Dollar under Sultan Yildirim Bayazid I Rahimahala. On his way, he conquered Georgia. In the Anatolian city of Sivas about 4,000 Armenian soldiers were buried alive to fulfill his vow that no blood would be shed if they surrendered. In 1401 AD he entered northern Syria. For three days Aleppo was destroyed. The heads of 20,000 inhabitants were made into pyramids 10 cubits high and 20 cubits in circumference with the faces of the corpses facing outwards. Many buildings such as schools and mosques dating back to the time of Nuruddin Zanki and Ayubi were destroyed. Hammer, Horns and Baralabic fell to him successively. The forces of Sultan Faraj of the Mamluk Empire were defeated in a devastating battle and Damascus fell to Timur Lenk's forces in 1401 AD. The Ottoman Empire was seen by Timur Lenk as the greatest challenge, as it controlled much of the former empire of Genghis Khan and Hulagu Khan. In fact, Sultan Yildirim Bayazid I Rahimahala, the supreme ruler of this kingdom had previously managed to expand his territory into areas that had been conquered by Timur Lenk. Timur Lenk was therefore very ambitious to defeat this kingdom. He mobilized his army to fight Bayazid I's army. In Sivas there was a great battle between the two armies. Timur Lenk emerged victorious and Bayazid I's son Erthugrul was killed in the battle. In 1402 AD there was a decisive battle in Ankara. The Ottoman Dollar army suffered another defeat, while Sultan Yildirim Bayazid I himself was captured while trying to escape. Sultan Yildirim Bayazid I eventually died in captivity. Timur Lenk continued his attacks on Bursa, the old capital of Turkey, and Syria. After that he returned to Samarkand to plan the invasion of China. However, on the way, at Otra, he suffered an illness that led to his death. He died in 1404 CE, at the age of 71. His remains were taken to Samarkand to be buried with great ceremony. All the rulers obeyed him, but only one opposed him. This was Sultan Bazbay, the Mamluk ruler of the time, because he felt that he had never submitted to Timur Lenk. Shah Rukh made a vow to give him the Kabar Kiswa. But Bazbay did not want to give up his right as the giver of the Kabar Kiswa, because giving the Kiswa had been the tradition of Egyptian rulers for hundreds of years. So Sultan Bazbay advised Shah Rukh that in order to fulfill his intention and vow, he should make the Kiswa and sell it, and give the money to the poor in Mecca. In response to this suggestion, Shah Rukh sent an envoy to Egypt, bringing with him the official clothing that was usually given to the governors or kings of the conquered areas of the Timurid dynasty. Sultan Bazbay found this so insulting that he tore the clothes to shreds and beat the messenger who was carrying them until he bled, as a form of challenge to Shah Rukh. Shah Rukh was unable to respond to this challenge because the Timurid dynasty was beginning to break apart. Shah Rukh died at the age of 72, 1447. After his death, he was succeeded by his son Ulugbeg 1447-1449 AD, a pious king and a scholar of science. However, his reign was short-lived. 
Two years into his reign he was assassinated by his power-hungry son Abdul Latif 1449-1450 CE. The last great king of the Timurid dynasty was Abu Sayyid 1452-1469 CE. It was during this period that the kingdom began to disintegrate. The vast territory of the kingdom was contested by two newly emerging Turkic tribes, the Karakoyunlu black sheep, and the Akkoyunlu white sheep. Abu Sayyid himself was killed while fighting Uzan Hassan, the ruler of Akkoyunlu. Abu Sayyid's death also marked the downfall of the Timurid dynasty. The dynasty came to a complete end in 1507, when the Uzbek Muhammad Shaybani conquered Badi, al-Zaman's rule in Samarkand.